Welcome to Forecast Builder Training on Integrity Checks. My name is Justin Titus, Senior Forecaster at Springfield, Missouri. By the time you get to the integrity step, you will have populated your foundation grids and gone through the Analyze Adjust process. The purpose of this step is to ensure inter-element integrity of your foundation grids as spelled out in NWS Directive 10-201 Appendix A. We also create the derived grid, such as apparent temperature and relative humidity in this step. The step is normally pretty simple without many options. Local tools can be added, but for the most part, you should just have the force integrity step uh, checks option in this step. The force integrity checks option will generally not be needed and is there as a safeguard. As a little background, Forecast Builder will run integrity on all grids the first time through each session. In subsequent passes of the integrity step, it will only recalculate the grids based on which grids were changed since the last run. This results in faster performance and time savings for the forecaster. Note that closing out a forecast builder resets this process. So the next time you open it, it will be considered the first run and will run integrity on all the required grids. Let's look at the process that this step goes through. First, it ensures that the wind gust is greater than or equal to the wind. It derives your QPF 06 or QPF 01 based on local configuration. QPF is set based on POPs, where QPF is set to zero below the lower POP threshold, which is defaulted to zero. It also ensures QPF is at least one hundredth, where POP is greater than or equal to 45. POP 12 is calculated in the step, and there is a check to ensure POP and sky consistency. However, this is optional and not enabled in most offices. Max T and min T are then checked with your temperature grids. Note that temperature remains unchanged and maximum and minimum temperature are the variables that are edited. Continuing on, heat risk is created where applicable. Sites that populate dew point will have a temperature and dew point check done and then RH will be derived, whereas sites that populate relative humidity will have the RH checked with min and max RH and TD derived. Uh, this step also calculates apparent temperature and creates maximum apparent temperature and minimum apparent temperature grids. Note that the max and min apparent temperature utilizes your max T and min T to stretch beyond your hourly apparent T grids. So this better matches up with the true max and min of your forecast. For example, for each grid point, it will utilize max T when your T is highest in that grid point, and then along with the RH at that hour of the maximum T. Continuing on, Forecast Builder will calculate wet bulb temperature. It will also calculate your TD afternoon and TD morning grids. Checks are then done to ensure transport wind speed is greater than or equal to your surface wind speed. It then performs a split on any grids at 12 hours prior to 0Z today so that these grids can be purged automatically by GFE. And this just prevents having grids that linger far into the past, which stretch out your grid manager time range. The Forecast Builder team welcomes any questions or feedback. See the VLAB page or email us at nws.forecastbuilder at noaa.gov.